Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everybody God has gathered up to worship here this day. We welcome those who are worshiping with us through live streaming, and we give thanks for everybody gathered here as well, right here in this place. And it's my privilege today to welcome worship host Sally Perry, Thank you. Director of Music Mike Mangan, who will be leading music this morning. We've heard beautiful music from Kit Allman already, our worship accompanist, and we give thanks for the work of our tech team found in the balcony. Thank you so much for helping everything happen. And now Mike will turn to you so you can tell us a little bit about our opening hymn this morning. Yes, our first hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing, was first written as a poem by James Weldon Johnson. It was performed for the first time by 500 school children in celebration of President Lincoln's birthday on February 12, 1900. Today, Lift Every Voice and Sing is often referred to as the Black National Anthem. We sing it today to acknowledge that God's people come from many different traditions and difficult journeys, but we are still all God's people together. Let's stand and join together in our song, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Bring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dog best has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has bought us. Facing the rising sun of the new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn has died. Yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We Come over a way that our tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Far from the gloomy past till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of a bright star is cast. God of our we. God of our silent tears, God who has brought us thus far on the way, God who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee, Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget me. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. And please join me in our responsive call to worship. Give thanks to God and call on Christ's name. Seek the Lord who is here with us now. And please join in the unison opening prayer. Mighty God, we thank you for your wondrous gifts and your constant love. Guide us on the journey of faith and feed us with your sustaining grace. Live in us this day that we might live in you and answer your call 
In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. When our, we find our way back to our seats, it's also time for children to come down front so we have some time to talk together. All right. Good to see you down here today. What do you notice different about today? Yes. Right. We've got a door out front. I think we'll see a picture of it in a moment. Look, it almost looks like the door is broken, but it's not. There are signs up all over the place that were under construction here during October. That means we're going to watch for signs of God being at work in us and in all of our relationships. So that's a gift that we have, and we're putting up all these signs of construction, like the door and hats, to remind ourselves God keeps working on us all the time. And that's a good thing, because that helps us get created new every day somehow. But especially in October, we're going to think about how God can be part of all the relationships we have with each other, and even God will work on the relationship we have with God because God wants that to be a strong relationship. Sometimes we even get mad at God, but God is big enough to take that and keep loving us so that we can keep receiving God's love. So we get to think all of our weeks ahead about how God keeps working on all of us and think about how that will change how we live and act in the world. So there's a word you're using in Sunday school this month, I think, as you start. Does anybody remember that word? Word of the month. Who can remember? Oh, do you remember? What? Maybe. It just went right out of your head. I call that flight of ideas. Yes. All right. I think it has something to do with your eyes and your ears. Yes. Attentiveness. You're right. You're right, that's the word of the month for Sunday school, but it's the word for all of us all the time as God's people because we should look all around and be attentive for where we see God working in the world because we should name that when we see it and give thanks for it. Let's take a moment to pray for God's help, asking God to help us recognize where God's at work. Okay, let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Gracious God, Thank you for all the ways you love us and keep working on us. You work within us and you change who we are a little bit every day. Help us to follow your son Jesus who taught us how to care for others. Help us to be attentive to the ways we can follow him and the ways you work on us and the ways we'll change to be the people you created us to be. We give thanks for your work on us. Help us to open our hearts for that and be ready. Thank you for these children and their families who got them here this morning. May all God's children say together, Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. You can follow along. It's printed on the front of your worship folder. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After he agreed with the workers to pay them a denarian, he sent them into his vineyard. Then he went out around nine in the morning and saw others standing around the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. And they went. Again around noon and then at three in the afternoon, he did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, he went and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you just standing around here doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. He responded, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the workers and give them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and moving on finally to the first. When those who were hired at five in the afternoon came, each one received a denarian. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. 
But each of them also received a, denar a denarian, and when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked one hour, and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had to work the whole day in the hot sun. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you a denarian? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give to this one who was, who was hired last the same as I give to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I'm generous? So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I spent some of the day on Friday with my grandson, Ethan, who's 14 months old. He is very coordinated and full of energy, as you can see. Full of energy for running all over the place. And he doesn't talk yet. He just points. He just points and has a great way of communicating exactly what he wants in terms of what he's pointing at or what he's trying to get us to do. He has his parents very well trained. And in no, no time at all, I was trained as well. We just know what he wants. He's an easygoing guy, but he's starting once in a while to just have one of those meltdowns when he doesn't get what he wants. Throwing apples, in this case. He's probably just past that peak of being able to think the world is all about him. That's just about to change because his ideas are starting to go beyond what's safe. And when he becomes a two-year-old, he, he will by then know exactly what the word no means. He's learning already. Much of the time, it seems like our lives would be easier if things could really be all about us, just like Ethan thinks they should be right now. We imagine we'd be happier if we were first on the list to receive everything we want, but as most of us begin to know, life is not all about us. We'll all have our vulnerable times when we'll need to receive care and things can be all about us again. But part of the learning curve of living in this world and being God's people is understanding that putting others before ourselves is sometimes the only way those other folks will have any experience of God's love at all. And if we get stuck in the stage of putting ourselves first, we'll miss becoming the people God created us to be and the people God keeps working on us to be. Jesus, in this passage, tries to get this across to his disciples in several different ways. This whole passage, though, responds to some worries, some questions that the disciple Peter has asked. He asked Jesus, Lord, we've left everything. Everything we have behind to follow you, what is going to happen to us? And Jesus said, there will be thrones in heaven for those who've left houses and brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers and children and fields for my sake. They will receive a hundred times as much and eternal life. And then he makes this statement about the first shall be last and the last will be first and tells his disciples this parable of the landowner and the laborers. So this setting in the vineyard would have been a familiar place to most of the people listening. And they would have known this setup for how workers worked back in that day. But so many things that were familiar to them would have also kind of made them frown and concern because there's the landowner going down to the marketplace himself instead of sending his manager. That just wasn't done in that day. And he keeps going over and over throughout the day. Why doesn't he just hire everybody at once? 
And even though they've been hired and arrived in the vineyard at, this, at different times, this idea that they'd all receive the same wage, that doesn't seem fair at all. We're reminded here that Jesus doesn't promise his disciples, any of us, that life will be fair. He doesn't promise us justice or glory in this life. The Gospel of Matthew was written in a time of argument as well in the early church about whether everyone who followed Jesus should be equally part of the Christian community. Some Christians had been Jews first, faithful to God all their lives. They knew how to be part of a faith community. And mixed in with that were these people who'd never had any religious practice before, had never known God or anything about God before they met Jesus and Jesus' teachings. Those who'd practiced loving God all of their lives thought they should get extra credit somehow in the kingdom, never mind that they were holding a grudge against Gentile Christians and objected to having to welcome them. They kind of missed the point that withholding their welcome was also withholding God's love from those people in some way. So there's two, two levels of discipleship to think through in this passage. There's Peter asking Jesus, we gave up everything of this life for you. What does that mean for our future? And Jesus saying, you may have nothing here, but you'll have everything in heaven. And right after that, the vineyard parable is there to tell us we'll have everything equally in heaven whether we arrive early or late, no matter when we became a disciple. We're to let becoming a disciple define us and be part of who we are in the kingdom, and that's the only thing that defines us there. So not too long ago at a staff meeting, we were having a discussion about what should go on the sign outside the church to welcome people. And someone suggested it should say, sinners welcome, sinners welcome. To my way of thinking, yes, that's an important message for everybody who's coming to church to be reminded of and for people who haven't been here yet to remind them they're welcome and they'll be in good company here when they get here at last. But let's also remind ourselves we don't have to be stuck in being defined as sinners. When we repent of our self-centeredness and are ready to serve Christ, we become forgiven people. Our sins are removed from us, and we may be great sinners that stumble into sin again, but we have an even greater Savior who is ready to offer us forgiveness and grace at all times. When we ask to be forgiven and follow Jesus, we live beyond our sins. And our most grateful response to that grace would be to seize every opportunity we can to serve others as God asks us to, as Jesus calls us to. But most of us seldom get on God's payroll all at once and stay there. We want to serve the ministry of Jesus Christ, but most of us would kind of like to do that as independent contractors in our own way. We'd like to keep making our own decisions without too much input from God. Maybe, maybe consult God when we think it's really necessary and we can't figure out what to do. Until we realize that that's not really what Jesus said when he said, follow me. Just follow me. Follow me, plain and simple. He really meant follow him all the time. It's hard to do that every day. It's really hard to follow him all the time in everything we do. But God's response when we find our way back to the vineyard of serving Christ is the same welcome for all of us. No accumulated reward for those who stayed there working just the satisfaction of wonderful work being done whenever we're there in the vineyard to do it. The payoff is the 
joy we'll have in heaven in knowing that somebody experienced God's love through us. I don't think it's an accident that Jesus doesn't tell us in this passage how to be a disciple. Because each of us with our different gifts will follow him differently in different ways. And God will know within our hearts whether we're really working on following or not. We're called to follow Christ. And he asks us to care for the people of the world, to share God's love with them. It sounds simple, but doing that all the days of our lives is no simple thing. There is a story told from World War II when Germany was bombing London. There was an Anglican church that had a statue of Jesus out in their yard. The church was destroyed in the bombing, and as they returned to see if they could salvage any part of the building, they also found the statue of Jesus with its hands and arms knocked off completely. They set it back up on its pedestal in front of the ruined church and asked themselves whether they should have the statue restored. They decided they should not. Instead, that statue is there today with a sign on it that says, Jesus has no hands but yours. Jesus has no arms but yours. We each have a choice every day as to whether we're willing to be the hands of Christ in the world, whether we're willing to be his feet to carry his love out into the world. We have a, an opportunity to recognize that we ourselves are sometimes so damaged, so struggling, that it feels like we're last. But God would put us first in giving us an opportunity to share love, forgiveness, and grace with the world. Because God keeps working on us all the time and creates us anew each day. May we have a chance and seize the opportunity each day to be God's people living in response to Jesus Christ's call on our lives. Amen. Stand and join together in our song, I'm going to live so God can use me. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to work so God can use me. So God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere. I'm gonna sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord,
join together in our closing song, The Trees of the Field. We'll sing this twice. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap will clap their hands and all the trees of the field will clap their hands the trees of the field will clap their hands the trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace the mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There is shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. While you go out with joy. That's the energy we need to bring through the month ahead as we invite others to come here to this place to experience this faith community. Next week, we'll be sharing a message about how do we find a way to trust again after our trust has been broken and we've been hurt. God is working on us at all times. We're under construction and God will help us with what's next. So friends, as we go from this place, May we know God's love is at work within us. God invites us to serve in this life and will bring us joy in the life to come. Amen.